All right. Hello, everybody. This is Wade Port. Uh, we're here with Emily LaFrance Mayo and Dr. Arno Bernier. Thanks for joining us. And we are getting excited for MLS traveling out to the West Coast, bringing up Emily Mayo from uh, the Southern California area because we are coming to the Berkeley area at the Doubletree Hilton Berkeley Marina, April 17 and 18. And we are gonna have uh, the young, talented Dr. Emily Mayo, myself and some more talented staff joining us out there. And so we wanted to just get together and share some, uh, some thoughts, some messages and encourage everybody who is interested uh, and wanting to take their skills and self-mastery to the next level to please come and join us uh, on this journey. Emily LaFrance, I'll start with you, as you have now experienced uh, life as a chiropractic student on the East and West Coast, starting at Life University in Marietta and now being out at Life West. So instead of asking you really what you see as the difference, I want to ask you more what you see as the same when it comes to yourself mm. and the people you're experiencing uh, that are having an empowered experience as a chiropractic student, that are enjoyed as a chiropractic student on their journey, and for those who you're seeing a high level of mastery. What, what are you seeing the similarities from the East and West Coast? Mm. Yeah, so I have been, as Dr. Wade said, I've been at Life University for the first half of my chiropractic experience, and then I've transitioned over to Life West here back in July, so in my sixth quarter. Um, in both places I've been with the MLS community, which has been absolutely phenomenal. And I think really like for me, MLS is just my home and the big part of it is like the community and the people that I find there. So my very first quarter at Life U, I started with the MLS crew and that was just where I've been the entire time. And it's been like my home, my family, and really just kind of like following along in that path of mastery. Um, I think what I find with that group of people is just the commitment to excellence and wanting to be the best versions of ourselves just as human beings and as chiropractors and wanting to continue to train and take things to the next level. Um, and I find that with different groups, but with this one, like I said, it's just like we're a big family. So coming out here and finding that we had just started an MLS club and getting joined in, I felt the same thing. Like different people, different school on the West Coast, but like that same sense of community and sense of wanting to like train and be the best. Um, so that's been a really wonderful experience so far, yeah. And before we started recording, you were talking with Arno a little bit about what you are actually most scared of and most afraid of. Can you, can you touch back on that? And then what has prompted you to lean into that knowing that, man, what I fear the most, I, I really need to, to lean into and develop in myself. Yeah, absolutely. So it's so fitting here that we're doing a recording and putting this out. So one of my biggest fears absolutely is public speaking and speaking in front of people. Um, it's been a fear that I've held for so long. And I think I've just avoided anytime I <clears throat> feel, start to feel uncomfortable or the discomfort of it. I just avoid it. want to like pass the baton on to someone else. But the MLS community has been wonderful because it's something that even at Life U, I know that you, Dr. Wade, saw the potential in me to be a leader and to help facilitate in this club. Um, and I did for a little bit there, but even then you saw me like not wanting to lean into the discomfort and be like, I don't know if I can do it. I don't know enough. I'm only a fourth quarter student, a fifth quarter student. And at the time I ended up transferring out here and you gave me a quarter or two and then you were like, okay, like game time, it's time to kind of step up again. And this time I, I definitely sat with it more and I want to like lean into the discomfort because I know that's where the growth happens. And I know that if you guys see the potential in me, even if it's something I can't see in myself right now, I know that it is there within me and just to like keep working towards that and lean into the discomfort so I can continue, <clears throat> excuse me, continue to grow. And I know that communication is just such a big part of who we are as chiropractors and such a big tool for us to be able to communicate to the world, like what we're doing and what the chiropractic adjustment is and what it's capable of. So it's been a really wonderful, like a growth experience. And I'm really excited to see how it shapes me um, on yeah. this journey. 
Yeah. yeah and, and you already know that you'll make a big impact doing it. And certainly a mantra for many people, but a perpetual one for MLS is trust the process. And so just yeah. thank you for, for trusting that process and knowing that, that, that growth does happen at the end of your comfort zone. Now, Emily Mayo, you may, may have been, you can inform me a little bit different because when you were at Life University, you really just seemed to be a take charge. I've got a clear vision. I'm going to, I'm going to go after it. I'm, I'm called into this position and you kind of ran a tight ship at the club, which really what Arno <laughs> was telling Emily earlier uh, prepared you for the six, the tools that you need to succeed in practice in marriage, in life. Uh, by staying plugged into a movement like this, do you want to expound on how your experience was different? And then I, the kind of second part of that is the training paradigms and communication and self-mastery and self-growth stuff that you've stayed plugged in through MLS. What have you seen as maybe the top two things that have served you the best in practice in the years following? Okay. Um, so I'll, I'll cycle back to the top two things, but um, I'm glad it came off that way. I definitely had moments where I, in fact, uh, Emily of France and I have had these conversations where I started out and my big job originally in MLS club was the organization because that was the thing I thought I could handle and grew into the teaching and it's something that I've been interested in but there was always that internal like oh oh man this is this is a little outside the comfort zone but just pushing through it um so it's amazing you know seeing that and then seeing how far you can come and as we said it's a journey it's a path of mastery and the thing that makes makes it happen and I see happen in my office every single day is just when you put the time in and you know, you know, you know, then it's easy. I don't mind teaching, you know, a hundred people how to do something because I've trained it so many times I could do it in my sleep. Um, it would probably be different if you showed me how to do something and then told me to teach people, you know, I'd probably go back to a little bit of anxiety. I mean, there's still the, okay, I can probably fake it, but um, definitely learn that through the club and through teaching and just all of those different experiences. So that's one of the biggest things that I gained. And again, I see it in my office. I just, you know, they ask a question, I explain, I adjust, I like it is, it is honed in to the nth degree. And so that's probably the biggest thing that I gained out of that. But uh, also, like Emily mentioned, it was and is my chiropractic family. You know, I still check in with them, you know, on a regular basis throughout the year. And it was that community that I really fell in with. So those are the two things, just the confidence in my adjusting skills and my teaching skills that came into my practice. And um, again, that, that group that I can constantly check back in with, even if every now and then, you know, it's every two, three months now, but it's still that community that it's like you never left. Beautiful. Yeah. And nice to see that even from my perspective, hard to even visualize you as someone that's like a little nervous or scared because it's, it's hard to see you as anything but the amazing, successful entrepreneur, uh, you know, leader and teacher that you have become, but not to be remiss. <laughs> It, you make it look natural and easy now because of the time you put in and the, the dedication and commitment to the whole process, uh, making it look easy. And, and it's great because it's now a theme happening of actually the sameness again uh, mm -hmm. on each of us uh, that we've had. And Arno, back to the public speaking part, because, you know, something that I know I have personally gained just so much from is the communication and uh, doctor means teacher doctor of chiropractic means teacher of the natural laws of life and how to be in harmony with these natural laws of life and so even hearing you about how much of a wreck you were in the early days of your public speaking it's it's not necessarily that someone's just natural or they're not but the commitment to the vision will have you see you through that uncomfort and pain and sometimes uh, loose bowel movements uh, to the other side of being to impact lives on a big level. I don't know. You want to speak on that a little bit? Well, first I want to say to Emily Mayo is that uh, it was amazing to see you when you step up into staff and you were just a supporting staff, but every time that you stepped in to clear something, you came with so much presence 
clarity, perfect communication. So you know that when I witness this, uh, the number of times that you staff, as you supporting staff with me, uh, I immediately identify you as a person that could lead MLS seminars in your area, in your community. And you have come through really well with that. So uh, I appreciate you sticking with the fear, confronting the fear, causing it to back down, and then boom, uh, excluding on the scene. So next thing that I want to say about this is that in spite of social media, in spite of Zoom video, in spite of Instagram, the biggest practice in the world are always practices where the chiropractor does public speaking in-house. When you do that, you create community, you enroll your people into a vision, you clarify and silence many of the questions that people may have during adjusting hours. So it allows you to adjust in nearly silence or in total silence because you have clarified all those possible questions through an educational process in your practice, which is not, and I want to emphasize, not just a lay lecture. It's conveying a deep understanding of chiropractic principle and philosophy in a practical, tangible, applicable manner for the public. So once you have done that, and I've seen it from the Bill DeMoss practice to the Michael Son of practice, to the Autumn uh, Gore practice, et cetera, that the biggest practice comes from people that do in-house public speaking. So you are basically stepping into that field and into that position. Sure, you can do video. Sure, you can do promotion on Facebook and Instagram and so on, but nothing will do it like having that rapport with your clientele, with your people, that connection. They can see your passion, your vision, your excitement, but also your vulner vulnerability and your humanity. And when you present that to the public, there is a bond which is very different than binding people to you. Many people in chiropractic bind their clientele to a contract, to a long range contract, rather than bonding with them and created that bond. And they have that bond with you and they have that bond with chiropractic. And down the line, even if they move to another state, they will seek a chiropractor with whom they can create the same bond and have the same bond, and they will be loyal to chiropractic for their entire lives. So thank you both, and you too, Wade, for stepping deeply into public speaking and being vulnerable and authentic and real in doing so. Beautiful. Arno, we are obviously mentoring a lot of students on each of the campuses. And what, and I know uh, Jim Deegan and Emily had a wonderful uh, program out in Oakland last year. And we're gonna actually be in San Jose later on this year for a level two. And I believe in fall, we're gonna do another level one in, uh, in California. But what we keep seeing is these amazing transformations of doctors in the field whether they've been in practice two years, six years, or 20 years, having these real awakening ahas or you know, almost career saving experiences in the programs. Do you wanna, you know, for any of the docs that have been in practice a while who never really got plugged in with the movement and culture of MLS, uh, anything for them experientially what you've seen or, or the possibilities that they might not see? Are you asking me or are you asking? For you, Arno. Oh, okay. Well, the biggest experience that I witness on that level, Wade, is a chiropractor from Quebec, highly successful, high volume practice, very committed to chiropractic, to pure and simple chiropractic. And I think he had been in practice around 30 years. It's a matter of fact, I don't recall his last name, but I know that his son was one of the Olympic champions for Canada in freestyle skiing, doing the bumps. Um, so he came to MLS and he came three times and after the first time he says that he never realized how much he had slipped in practice in his adjusting and he didn't realize what the level of connection that he could have with a person on the table while adjusting and that MLS had refined all of the component, all of the ingredient necessary to create that deep presence, that moment of 
absolute emptiness with oneself and being in your heart while also refining his skill to a high level of precision. So for him, it was a deep awakening. He was very passionate about chiropractic, so it was not a career-saving situation, but I have seen that being a career-saving situation for many chiropractors that after 15, 20 years had lost their passion, their connection to the principal and the profession, and boom, they were back, fired up about chiropractic and back in practice for steam. You guys there? <laughs> okay, it froze up for me for just a second. Uh, and whether it's kind of life-saving, you know, I don't want to use that, that term flippantly, whether it is our physical training that we just do with our chiropractic specific fitness program to make sure that we are able to practice as long as we want and feel great doing it and be highly functional, uh, or if it is someone's heart that is being saved, because it's it can be heartbreaking to see chiropractors get kind of swallowed up by the machine and then actually come out the other side resentful at chiropractic, which is like saying I'm angry and resentful at mother nature, you know? And so at programs, I love seeing it because not only do they say Monday morning was a huge difference in my connection, my rapport, my emotional connection, my skill set, my presence, with the people I was serving and they noticed, uh, but that it reignited my purpose and my love for chiropractic. And I know that for all of you, it fills us up or fills our cup. And we are so excited to come out to California again and continue our programs. Uh, love to each and every one of you. Emily, I will see you very soon. Uh, Arno, this summer, can't wait. Emily, uh, thank you for carrying the torch over at Life West and uh, kind of spreading that, that fire of passion and love and service, okay? Thank you so mm -hmm. much, and uh, we'll see you guys real soon. Terrific. Thank you, Wade. Thank you, Emily, and Emily number two. <laughs> Thank you.